Welcome back to Pete. And now we're sit back, relax, and enjoy next expense.
you go? Away from the things of man. Next expense, everybody. Evan, that was a great set. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about how you prepared for tonight with your set. Um, well, so first, um, well, so there's, there's the short version and the long version. The, the, the semi-shorter version is that uh, I learned of the date that I was playing, and you know, promptly I decided, you know, like what I really need to do to prepare is think about all of my gear. <laughs> um, that's that's not what you need to do. Turns out, um, but uh, but once I got to it, basically, um, you know, it's like writing for me is there's always like a way in, like a a sort of window you see to the song that will become a song. Um, and it's always different, but you know, there's, there's, there's a way in. For this, like the, for the first piece, um, it was really just like the sound, just doing the sound design um, and realizing, you know, like, okay, I wanted to do something like, to start with something sort of dark and like end with something lighter, you know, and so like, um, Interestingly, like the, the my first attempt at that at that sound for that that organ was this very sort of like wispy, ethereal, cold sounding thing. 
it turns out like you can't really do dark and cold, so like it ended up, you know, it ended up shifting to like this really warm organ sound. Um, and then the second piece, um, the second piece really like was was mostly actually inspired by this um, RX one hundred one song um, that you know I just loved. Um, and so I, I tried to do that, I tried to do it like minimal. I don't, I don't think it ended up quite as minimal as I wanted, but um, I, I still in that direction. From my experience of, of hearing you play in previous uh, places like resonant frequencies, I've always heard you say, play extremely ambient pieces as you know, the first part of your set was. You know, I first saw you play a DX7. Yeah. And, and you, know, you played beautiful strings, and it was great. Thanks. And this was an expansion to me because you did a beautiful ambient set in the, in the first half and the second half went, went in a different direction that I haven't heard from you yet. So that was a really interesting to hear from you. And I love the samples that you used. Tell me a little bit about how you, how, how you prepared that second half. Um, well, uh, I knew I wanted to do pads and some drums with some toms, so basically I did that. <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I, I don't know how much more there is to it, you know. It's... Well, tell me, what, what are you using to trigger them? Oh, um, so, so that's actually, that's a whole story. That has to do with this whole gear thing, right? You know, so like, I'm like, okay, you know, like, let me prepare my gear. And like, the, my main frustration um, as like anyone that has, um, been so kind as to listen to me rant about it has been like sequencers, um, which just like, I'm just really not satisfied with like anything out there, like nothing at all. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I actually like bought like a Renee and like, um, you know, a bunch of stuff for the modular and like I'm selling all of it. I, I hate it, it's terrible. <laughs> um, I, I mean, people do amazing stuff with it, but I don't. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but, you know, I kind of, like, came back to, like, you know, I'm just going to use Ableton Live. So that's, that's what's triggering everything. Um, Ableton Live, MIDI to CV, and we're done. Um, All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to open the audience to some questions. And we have some questions for Evan's set tonight. All right. Thanks so much. That first piece was so meditative. Thank you. Um, it was, yeah, it's really grounding. And then it was really nice contrast to the second one uh, that you transitioned to, into. Um, can you just walk me quickly through the circuitry? Like, h how is it working? Like, how do you get the samples in that box that you're pressing? And then how do you get that LFO sound that you're coming out of your suitcase thing? Like, OK, uh, so, so part, partly. <laughs> there's, 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 um, so there's two more modules down here, because uh, they didn't, they didn't all fit up there. Um, but uh, you know, w welcome to the man behind the curtain, right? Um, but uh, so the first piece was was uh, the K1M, which is this weird, like, kind of additive synthesis type of sort of sample, but it's not actually sampled because they didn't have the memory, so they just put 128 sine waves that do something, and you layer them together. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really weird synth, but it, but it, but it, sounds, it sounds great, um, I think. Um, and then the, this guy was doing the pads in the, in the other one, that's a JV1010. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so there's, there's nothing, the only thing coming out of the computer was, was the sample. Um, and then, uh, the modular was doing all the percussion um, plus the bass line um, in the second piece. Um, so I'm not really like making that much use of the modular actually, I mean just percussion. Um, which is kind of like, that's, that's sort of like why I ended up getting into modular in the first place. It's like, you know, I can get, like I'm pretty satisfied with, with most polysynths in terms of like the sounds they produce. Um, but like, you need, you need a modular in my opinion, to do, to do progression the way that I want to do it, you know? Uh, 
the when in when you're developing the last song, when mm -hmm. did you start using that sample? Um, that was pretty much the last thing that I that I threw in there. Could, like the the rhythmic tension oh, over, the, over the over the runtime of that sample made the made the piece work for me, like through the repetition. Yeah, you know, I, and I mean, I've I've actually like when I've used samples before, I have like cut them up and and shifted and you know made them work with rhythm or, or pitch or something. Uh, this was actually like just really fortuitous. It would you know it's just. I threw that sample in there and I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. This is like, the, the pacing of this is exactly the pacing of this song. Like, how did I get so lucky? So I just, you know. It, that, that song was devastatingly melancholy. It's funny that you say it was light. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> so sad. It was well, I enjoyed it, thank you. It's, it's in a major key instead of like Locrian or whatever the hell the other one was. <laughs> Uh, thanks, I enjoyed your set. Uh, Thank you. Um, you mentioned that, uh, that on the second track you were trying to uh, start with a minimal mindset yeah. and go from there. Um, how much of a, a role does sort of setting and context play? Because you have to really commit to medical, minimal music and you have to sort of have everybody with you uh, when, when you do it. How much of a, a role does the setting play in that? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I feel like, you know, in, in this particular space, I wasn't worried about it. Um, you know, I, I wasn't, uh, like, I feel like, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes down here. And, like, you know, it's everybody's sitting down. You know, you're not, like, trying to dance, right? Um, so, you know, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't too worried about it. Um, but I, I guess in general, you know, like, like my thinking about, you know, minimal stuff is like, it shouldn't, it shouldn't feel lacking. You know, like, like if, it's, it's, if it's minimal, it's minimal because you only need like three things to fill the song. Um, and I'm not totally sure that piece succeeded in that. Um, it was kind of, I, I think it maybe could have used a couple more things. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, in general, you know, that's, that, that would be my, my approach to minimalism, you know, it's like, um, um, or maybe even, you know, like in the first piece, like you can, like that organ sound is interesting enough that you can just hold a note and you're not like, where are the other notes? I don't know. Like it's, it's, it's fine. Right. Um, so that's, you know, I, I, I guess I feel like you know, if, if the minimal stuff isn't working, like if people like aren't patient enough for it, it might also be a problem with your song. Two part question for you. Really enjoyed the performance. Uh, the first part was definitely meditative. I was wondering you. when you were preparing that piece, the, the sound design was really cool. It kept, it moved and shifted and it, even though you were, you know, it was kind of a, a minimal arrangement. My question is, did you choose a, a key signature in mind, or did you kind of improv that as you went? And the second question, if you could explain the audio routing of your instruments and the use of the mixer. Also, I don't see a sound card up there, so I was curious about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, totally. Um, so, <clears throat> let's see, the, fir what, the first question was sound design? Sorry, first question was about, was about your, um, the first piece. You, I know you made, you made the sound. Um, and you played, oh, right, did right. you have a set key or kind of? Key, yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I, have, I have like a pretty good music theory background. Um, I feel like that's somewhere in my brain, but I don't ever actually think about it um, when, I, when I'm making stuff. So, um, you know, I was, I was aware when I was doing it, I was like, oh, this is in some weird mode, but like I didn't, try to figure out that mode or anything. Um, with, uh, with a piece like, like that where you're really like um, allowing the, um, the notes to stretch out, um, it's actually like, like the key you put it in is, is utterly essential, right? Like, I mean, like if you, um, if you hear like there's a way in which um, 
the beat frequencies actually increase as you go up. You know, and so like it, it kind of makes, it made me speed up a little bit, you know, like as I'm doing the higher notes. Um, so like you have to, like it, it, it wouldn't work in the same in any other key. Like it was, it's, you know, B, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's, it's very important, but, but I don't, I don't, didn't really think about it beforehand. Um, I actually did think the second piece is in E major and I did intentionally choose that in order to contrast with the first piece um, to try and have like as many different notes as possible or close to that, but also be kind of related, you know? Um, oh, and the second question. Um, so the routing, uh, everything that's a sound goes into the mixer. Um, it's, it's pretty much that simple. Um, and I, I'm not, so I, you know, my sound card is, straight out of the headphone jack, um, which, you know, obviously I wouldn't record that way, but it's fine for live, you know. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I actually don't have a mixer in the modular, so I just, you know, well, that's not true. I, I am using, a, I have mixers, but they're kind of more effects than they are straight mixers. Um, so just everything that's a thing goes into the mixer, uh, send, receive for reverb, um, that's it. Evan, thank you so much for your in-depth explanations <laughs> and performing tonight. I really appreciate you coming out tonight. Yeah, thanks for, so much for having me. This was a blast. Excellent. Everybody, next expands, everybody. <laughs>